to share with you about the power of the Holy Spirit. This will be the third teaching in a series of three that I'm teaching on about the power of the Holy Spirit. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you so much that your Spirit is right here with us this very moment. I ask you, mighty God, that you will come and be the teacher by your Holy Spirit. Let us hear what the Spirit would say unto us through your word, not what man's mind and man's wisdom would say, but what your word says, the Holy Bible, the 66 books of the canon that we have in black on white. What a blessing to have your word. And I ask you that you will teach us through your word that which God has in mind for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Well, this is the third uh, a portion of a series of three messages that I have on the power of the Holy Spirit. And I'm only going to spend about 15 minutes with you to wrap this all up because I'm talking about when the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, changes you and me into another man or another woman, another person. And by the way, that other person is Jesus. We are being transformed and changed into the image of Jesus Christ. Now, I um, want to just re re uh, say that in our first teaching, we spoke on specifically the power of the Spirit. Acts 1 verse 8, which I will uh, quote for you here in a minute. The second teaching was more about Saul's life and how God took Saul on a journey throughout his life to the point where the power of the Spirit changed him into another man. So the scriptures that we used for that was firstly Acts chapter 1 verse 8. This is the theme uh, scripture of all that we have been talking about. And it says, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you will be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the uttermost parts of the earth. Listen to those first words. You will receive power. I'm reading from the New King James Version. So that's been the theme. The next scripture, which we ended with last week, which I'm going to focus on more this week, is 1 Samuel 10 verse 6. And it says, Then the Spirit of the Lord will come upon you, and you will prophesy with them and be turned into another man. And let it be when these signs come to you that you will do as occasion demands for God is with you. So in the life of Saul, we see that the spirit of the Lord came upon Saul. And when he did, he changed Saul into another man. Today, I want to share with you, God changed Saul's life. Secondly, God changed Peter's life. And thirdly, God changes your and my lives. Saul's life was changed. Now there's a few things here that happened in Saul's life which changed him into another man. Firstly, God had put him on a journey. In our previous teaching, we read about the donkeys, how God took him through the, the steps, how he was following those donkeys, and, and little did he know that God was using his everyday life to ultimately get him to meet the prophet Samuel who spoke into his life and suddenly his life was put into a new direction. Destiny happened and eventually was empowered by the Holy Spirit and became the king of Israel. But secondly, firstly, God put him on that spiritual journey. But secondly, he met the prophet who spoke to him. And you see, today I'm speaking to you. In the name of Jesus from God's word and as Samuel spoke to Saul that he would be changed into another man I am telling you in the name of Jesus and as the Lord's a missionary that you will be changed your life will be changed for death and life are in the power of the tongue and God has great things in store for you thirdly Saul obeyed God's word when he heard Samuel speak, he didn't just go about, when he heard Saul, Samuel speak, he went forth and, and was open to that which the Lord had for him. 
forget for a moment that in the end of Saul's life, what a sad story, he became a backslidden king. Last time he heard from the supernatural was when he went uh, and, and, and met with a psychic and communicated with demons and, and died a death by suicide. What a terrible ending for somebody who had so much potential that God himself had spoken. But forget about that for a moment. That's a sermon for another day. We can rejoice and see that God has used the beginning of his life as an example for you and me. How we can be changed into another man. So he obeyed God. And then number four, he was immersed in an atmosphere of praise. Remember that when Saul... When from Samuel, he met a company of prophets and they came with trumble, harp and all kinds of music. They were not just making a noise. They were praising Jehovah. And when he was in their presence, in the presence of praise and worship, it was part of God turning him to another man. And with that goes that he was surrounded by people of faith. When Saul went to the hill of God where the garrison of the Philistines were, saw, saw the company of prophets. And of course, that's where the praise and worship was. But then what happened? It says, and he prophesied with them. I want to tell you, this is powerful, that you and I have to hang around people of faith. Don't hang out with those who try to discourage you, pull you back into your old life. No, Hang around those who build your faith. Hang around this channel on YouTube because God will use this to prophesy into your life. And before you know, you will be prophesying like we do in this sense. What I'm, the word prophecy here means not necessarily prof, prophetic gift or something. But what it means is you'll have a new life. You'll have a new way of talking. You'll have a new way, way of living. So who are you hanging with? Hang with people of faith. Come to church on a Sunday and be there when the, the, the church does things and when an evangelistic event is happening. Be there. Why? When prayer is going on, when there's a prayer meeting, why should you be there? Because when you hang around people of faith, you will be changed into another man. Now, there's some Christians I would think perhaps not hang around with because they are so full of unbelief. And therefore speak faith unto them. You take control and you set the tone and you speak faith to them. That they may be built up in the things of God. And then finally uh, Saul, what was it that changed him? It says there in 1 Samuel 10 verse 6. And the spirit of the Lord will come upon you. And you will be changed into another man. This is what I'm saying, my friends. God changed Saul into another man. And it was the thing that happened to him when the Spirit of God came upon him that changed his life. And I'm telling you, this is what I'm speaking on to you about today. When God changes you into another man. So God changed Saul in the Old Testament. But God also changed Peter in the New Testament. You know, Peter was that kind of brother that said some really smart stuff and some really stupid stuff. It kind of reminds us of it of us, right? Because I don't know about you, but I've, some, I've come up with some really smart stuff. And then like the next day come up with like really stupid stuff. And why? Because we're just human. We falter. But the thing is, when we live in the spirit and when we gravitate to the things of God, that doesn't make us more smart, but it is the Spirit of God in us that brings us revelation. We speak revelation and power. Now, let me read for you. Uh, Peter was the one who had the revelation that Jesus was the Christ, the Son of the living God. This was the smart part, if I can use that word. In the book of Matthew 10 and 16, verse 13, it says, when Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples saying, Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? So they said, some say John the Baptist, some Elijah and others, Jeremiah or one of the prophets. Why they would say Jeremiah, I have no idea. But he said to them, But who do you say that I am? And Simon Peter answered answer and said, You 
are the Christ, the son of the living God. What a powerful statement saying that Jesus is the Messiah and Jesus is the manifestation of the invisible God, the son of the living God. Verse 17 says, Jesus answered and said to him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father which is in heaven. And so I say unto you that you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatsoever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. What a blessed time. I tell you, if I was Peter, I'd be walking on cloud nine. But you see, the very next few verses, Peter went from saying something this smart by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. But when he went back into his own natural mind, he said stupid stuff. For example, from uh, Matthew 16, verse 21 through 23. From that time, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and the chief priests and the scribes and be killed and be raised on the third day. That was the gospel message right there. This was the crux. This was the central part for which Jesus came into this world. And then Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. Oh, do we even see this? In churches where people have just been blessed by the pastor, the minister, and they, they got affirmation. And, and, and then suddenly they think there's something. And then they think now they're supposed to put, set the pastor straight. I don't know where that came from. I just thought that. But that, that literally happens. But listen, Peter took Jesus aside. And he began to rebuke Jesus. What disrespect. And... He said, far be it from you, Lord, this shall not happen to you. But Jesus turned to Peter and said, get behind me, Satan. You are no offense to me, for you are not mindful of the things of God. You are mindful of the things of men. Matthew 16, verse 21 through 23 so Peter, when the Holy Spirit illuminated his mind that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, he said something really smart. But when he pulled back into his natural mind, listen, you are mindful not of the things of God, but the things of men. So he was in the natural mind when he said this. Jesus rebuked him. So Peter, after that rebuke, should have been all straightened out. And he never became perfect in his entire life, like none of us are. But a radical change took into his place in his, in his life. But before that happened, the Bible says that Peter denied the Lord three times. In Jesus' darkest hour, Peter, who later even said, Lord, I'm willing to die for you. I'm almost done. Just give me five more minutes. Lord, I'm willing to die for you. That same Peter denied the Lord three times. Can God use a man like that? I think we should just completely discredit him because God can't use a man like that. A man who's one day has got the spirit speaking through him and the other day is all arrogant and tells the, the pastor what to do or tells Jesus what to do, calls the shots and so forth. Well, can God use a man like that, that just had said, Lord, I'm willing to die for you. And then right after that, what does he do? He denies him three times. Well, you see, this is the wonderful thing, that God does not look at our faults. He doesn't weigh us up to see how good we are before he decides whether or not he'll use us. God looks beyond our faults. He knows we are but clay. And God changes our lives and he takes the rough places off and he molds us. See, God does not call us for who we are. God calls us for what he can make of us. For what he sees in us. God sees in you a champion. Regardless of your and my faults. God sees a champion. God sees a vessel that he can use. I want to read a scripture to you 
It's in 1 Corinthians 1 verse 26 through 21. This will give you an idea of God calling the foolish and the weak things of this world to use them mightily for his glory. It says, 1 Corinthians 1 26, For you see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise according to the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called, but God has called, called, chosen the foolish things of this world to put to shame the wise. God has chosen the weak things of the world to put to shame the things which are mighty and the base things of this world and the things that are despised. God has chosen that the things which are not to bring to nothing the things which are that no flesh should glory in his presence. But of him are you in Christ Jesus, who became for us the wisdom of God, his righteousness and sanctification and redemption. That is, as it is written, he who glories, let him glory in the Lord. So the Lord is showing us that God is not calling the noble, the mighty and the wise to be his vessels. But God calls the foolish things of this world, the weak things and the base things so he can bring to naught the mighty the wise and the powerful to confound them because we work operate not by our own strength and power but we operate by the power of the holy spirit and the bible yet teaches us why he does this he says in verse 31 he who glories let him glory in the lord when God uses me, you and me, it's not because we glory in ourselves. Look how great I am, but it's how great thou art. And look again what the Bible says here in verse 29, that no flesh may glory in his presence. No flesh may glory in his presence. So I want to end here now with this final teaching on the power of the Holy Spirit. I've told you about Saul, I've told you about Peter, but now let me tell you about you and me, and this is, this is what I wrap it all up. I'm telling you and I that we can be changed by the power of the Holy Spirit. If God did that for Saul in the Old Testament, if God did that for Peter in the New Testament, God can continue to do that in your and my life. If we trust Him, if we allow him to work with us and finish what he started in our lives. Let's pray. Father God, I come to you in the name of Jesus. I thank you for my brother and my sister. And Lord, I thank you for the series on the power of the Holy Spirit. And I ask you now, mighty Jesus, that you will turn things around in my brother and my sister's life. I ask you, Lord, that we will be turned into another man. In Jesus' name, amen. Before I say goodbye to you, I want to conclude this just to put the cherry on the top of the cake. And that is, have you ever wondered, you'll be changed into another man? Well, who is that man? When we read the New Testament, we find that Jesus is that man. Doesn't the Bible say that we can become like him? In fact, we can become so much like him that it will be as if he dwells in us, as if he speaks through us. Colossians 1.27, Christ in you, the hope of glory. And God bless you.